middle of the block. Oh, before we start class, um, you might need either two blocks or two water bottles or something that you can put your, your hands on. So, for example, let's say we're here, we won't be there, but that you can really place your hands on. Um, what could also work? Two, two stacked books maybe could work, um, some, but it's easier if you can move them as well. Um, so if you don't have blocks, what else could you use? You could use two bottles of wine <laughs> or two bottles of anything where you can put a little bit of weight on. Um, if you have that around, maybe start to gather that. If you don't, we'll, move, we'll um, move around it. It's always nice to have your props ready for class, your belts, your blocks because we might use them. Seated can be cross-legged or can be kneeling. And then, I forgot my watch. And then we'll keep going forever and ever. Let me just get my watch. All right. Close your eyes. And just sit still. Commit to sitting still. Notice if there is a tendency to want to fiddle. That's very natural. And then we'll do a quick scan and check in with yourself. Important with a check-in is that we don't judge or attach to what we observe. Often when we feel really great, often when we have a lot of energy, we feel happy and joyful, we tend to attach to that feeling. We want to have some kind of guarantee that we'll feel like that forever. So that's where the non-attachment comes in. Yes, it's just an observation in this moment, Maybe the next breath will feel different. And the same applies for judging if you are not feeling, let's say, in your mind, 100%. Whether that is physically, emotionally, or mentally, the practice of meditation and the practice of sitting still can help you identify the difference every time you sit still. And that's why it's a practice. The more you sit, the more you can subtly go, hey, my body feels different from the last couple of times, or my mind, or my underlying energy is different. But it's only possible to notice the differences if you do it regularly. So for now, just sit still. Observe what you observe. And without, again, judging or attaching, your physical body, do you feel your physical body, if we would take the visual image of a battery being red, being meaning that the battery is almost flat, or totally into the green, meaning that your battery is full and you've got lots of energy, or maybe somewhere in the orange space, if you know what I mean, can you kind of tell yourself, hmm, physically I'm more towards green or more towards red, without judging, without attaching. And then do the same for your emotional state. Do you feel emotionally quite stable? Or is today a day where you feel a little bit unstable? And your mental state. Do you feel centered, focused, or maybe very distracted and almost restless? Are you, is your mind shooting all over the place? No attachment, no judgment, just an observation. And once you've done that bit of self-analysis, check-in, you can start to determine how you are going to practice on your mat today. Let's say everything is towards the green, go for it. Really, maybe even challenge yourself 
or maybe if you're more towards the red side, take it easy, be kind, practice compassion. Now, what connects all of those different parts of you is your breath. So really feel the breath into your nostrils or the nose, through the throat, into the lungs, and then slowly exhale to empty the lungs, air throughout of the throat, and then you can exhale out of the nose or out of the mouth for now. Place the palms in front of the heart to set an intention and also to connect our heart through this gesture. Thanks for trusting, trusting me, thanks for practicing with me. And my intention for today, uh, during my practice, is to be grateful and to honor all the teachers that came before me. All the practices I've done, which have made me the way I am today, which have given me all the knowledge, all the sensations of so many different practices. All those teachers have added to my life, to my practice. So I honor those teachers and also the teachers that taught them. And then most importantly to honor the guru or the teacher that is existing inside yourself. That is the most important teacher. That could be your intention or just think of your own intention and then bow your head towards your fingertips to seal that in. And then we move to child's pose. So whatever you're sitting on, move it to the side of your mat and bring your big toes to touch. Knees go nice and wide and let's melt our hips towards the heels. It's nice to bring some swaying movement into the upper body. So just really settle into your child's pose. And then pause, find stillness, and bring your hands at the fingertips. And then spiral walk your hands far forward, nice and active arms, and then three more breaths here. Slow breaths in through the nose, slow breaths out. Ujjayi breath is a breath in and out of the nose with a slight restriction in the back of the throat. <sighs> as if you are cleaning sunglasses or the mirror. You want to fog up the mirror, that's the feeling in the back of the throat. And then immediately on the inhale, come to tabletop. And we'll start some free movements. Free movements could be cat cow. So a cat cow is an inhale to look up, your tailbone comes up, and exhale to round the spine. So that could be your free movements. But you close your eyes, and you do it with your length of breath. Really lengthening the breath, slowing down the breath. That could be you, but anything else, circular movement, lifting an arm, lifting a leg, even coming to the knees, will have another 40 seconds of free movement. I would invite you to close your eyes, keep breathing, let the breath be your guide. Around three more rounds of breath. So if you did something totally asymmetrical, maybe start to copy it on the other side. And then come back into your neutral tabletop. Bring your right arm to the front and your left leg behind you. Take a deep breath in. And bring your nose, your knee and your elbow together. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen forward and back. Really reach, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze and round. Two more times. Breathe in, lengthen. Breathe out, squeeze. Inhale, lengthen forward and back. Exhale, hand down to the floor only. Your left leg is lifted. Take a deep breath in. Knee to your left elbow and now step the foot to the outside of the left hand. Lovely. Start to come a little bit more forward. Maybe you can toe heel 
your front foot a little bit to the forward, and then move your hips forward and back. So you breathe in to come forward, and you pulse back on the exhale. You can also lift your left foot three more times. Inhale forward, exhale back. Two more. Inhale, play around with it a little, open it up a little. Good. One more time, come forward and then step the right foot to the top of your mat for Malasana squat. Malasana can be feet as wide as the mat, elbows on the thighs, maybe the elbows are on the inside of the knees, maybe you're a little bit lower. Depends on your body, take the option that suits you. Now breathe in and lift your heart. Breathe out, bring the right hand down towards the floor. Knee and elbow are resisting. Bring the left arm up towards the sky and then create a couple of circles with your hand. Nice. Take a deep breath in. Both hands down, hands to heart center. Exhale. Inhale, lift the heart towards your thumbs. Left hand down, exhale, ground. Resist the floor, resist the knee. Reach the right arm up. And then a couple of circles through the hand. Inhale, reach your right hand up. Exhale, hand in front of the heart. Inhale, lift your heart to your thumbs. Exhale, fold forward, press the rita. So you don't heel your feet, hip width apart, and now hold on to the opposite elbow. Shake a soft no with the head. You can bend your knees generously. Stay where you are, just breathe nice and slow. Take a halfway lift, lengthen the spine, hands can come under your knees, onto the shins, exhale, fold forward, relax, maybe draw the nose closer to your legs. Two more times, inhale, lengthen, feel the back line, stretch, exhale, surrender your chest. One more time, inhale, come up. Exhale, come forward. Stand all the way up, rise. High mountain feet are hip width apart. And then twist to the right. Exhale, left hand to the front, right hand behind you. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, back to center. Bend your knees, fold forward, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And now step both feet to the back of your mat for plank pose. Lovely work. Take a deep breath in here. Bring your right knee to your nose. Exhale. Inhale, step back, plank pose. You can drop to the knees. Left knee to your nose. Exhale. 30 seconds here. Inhale, plank pose. Right knee to your nose. Exhale. Inhale, keep going. And then exhale, nice and slow. Keep your shoulders above your hands. Let's, let's work in the core. You can drop to the knees if this is too much. Take the level that suits you today. Halfway, stay with it. Five. Four. Three. Two. Awesome. Step back. Plank pose. Feet hip width apart. Downward facing dog. Lift your tail. Shake a soft no. Now look at your hands and make your index fingers parallel to the long edges of the mat. Parallel to each other and then spread the other fingers away from it. Good. Straight spine is a priority over straight legs. So maybe you need to bend the knees to really lengthen the spine. Relax your shoulders, soften the neck, soften the neck. Take a deep breath in here. Drop back down to the knees, tabletop. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. Take a deep breath in. Knee, nose, elbow together, exhale. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, make yourself nice and small. Focus your eyes, breathe in on a fixed point, and then maybe on a knee of your fixed point, bring the nose to the knee to the nose. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, last time, really round. Inhale to lengthen, hold the leg, 
Just the hand down to the floor. Open the collarbones, breathe in. Right knee, right armpit, and then step the foot softly to the outside of the knee. And there we go. Now you can walk that right foot a little bit more forward. Inhale to bend the knee and look forward. Exhale to pulse the hips back. I notice I'm on fingertips. You can also bring blocks under your hands. If this is a little bit too high, two more pulses. Inhale forward, open up the groin. Exhale, feel the right hamstring stretch. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, bring it back. Lovely work. Come forward, bend the knee, look forward, and then step again to your malasana squat. Take the option that works. You know your body better than anyone else. Awesome work. Take a deep breath in here. And now we stand up nice and slow. Three, two, one, toe here, your feet to touch, hands to heart center, exhale. Inhale, high mountain. To your left, twist, exhale. Inhale, high mountain, bring the arms up. Twist to the other side, exhale. Inhale, high mountain, bring it up. Lovely, fold forward, exhale, dive forward. Inhale, halfway, reflect them. Step back to downward facing dog, tailbone up. Now if you're not sure about the length or the distance between your hands and your feet, just come to plank pose quickly. Find a comfortable plank pose, bend the knees and lift your tailbone up towards the sky. My heels are still hovering just on the floor, but I'm energetically pressing them down towards the floor. Very nice. Alright, move your left foot a little bit into the center of the mat. Right foot lifts, three like a dog, inhale. Knee to your nose, exhale, bring it in and around the spine. Lift the leg, inhale, three like a dog. To the right armpit, exhale. Draw the heel close to the bum as well. Active leg, inhale, three like a dog. Activate the right toes to the left arm. Exhale. Nice. Let's warm up the body. Inhale all the way up. Look forward and softly step the foot between the hands. If that's challenging, help the foot. Help the foot by holding on to the foot and bringing the knee under, under uh, knee above the ankle. Excuse me. Take a deep breath in. Look forward. Pyramid pose. Flex that right foot. Again, you can use blocks if you need to. Come forward, no lunge. Pulse it back. Pyramid pose. Really opening up in the legs. Inhale here. Pulse it back. Exhale. Fabulous. Breathe in, low lunge. The last time we hold. I like to walk my hands a little closer. So they're under my shoulders. And now maybe you can even try to lengthen the spine. So instead of rounding forward, maybe you need blocks, bottles or books underneath your hands to give yourself more space. Focus your eyes on a fixed point. Now actively pull the toes towards your shin. Yes, I know. For three, two. Bend the knee, look forward, place the hands forward. Shiva squat, hook the left knee behind the right. Lovely work. Take a deep breath in. Now place the left foot next to you on the floor, legs up crossed. Arms come up towards the sky. Take a deep breath in. Fly the arms back. Exhale. Now pulse it. Inhale, come up. Exhale, come down. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, breathe in. Hands to heart center, breathe out. Lift the heart towards the thumbs. Twist to your right, so your left elbow hooks from the outside of the right knee. And now start to press a little bit into that right hand, so your right shoulder starts to stick above. You can look down, or to your right elbow. Three breaths here. Squeeze the navel in, really squeeze those organs, create space in your spine. Take a deep breath, look down. Fingertips down to the floor, exhale. Left leg lifts, three-legged dog, left leg all the way up towards the sky, hold and breathe. Option is to bring the right hand 
around the right calf. And then to bring the nose closer. Woo! Really point those left toes. That's it. Breathe. For three, two, both feet to meet nice and slow. Hover the foot and then place it down. Inhale, halfway lift, leg back. Exhale, step back, plank pose. Take a deep breath in here. Chaturanga, can be on the knees. And then you come all the way down. Up dog or cobra pose. Press your whole body on the floor, point your toes. Chin in, round the spine, flip the feet. They're the last thing to move. Now take a deep breath into the nose. And a sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> Walk your right foot a little in towards the center of your mat. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Point the toes. Really reach it behind you. Knee to nose. Exhale, shoulders above your wrist. Inhale, three-legged dog lengthen. To the left arm or armpit. Exhale. Look at your hands spread. Good. Inhale, three-legged dog. To the right arm. Wonderful work. Inhale, three-legged dog lengthen. Look forward, step the foot behind the thumbs, or help it. That's it. Look forward, inhale. Pyramid pose, flex that foot, exhale. Inhale, come forward, bring your fingers onto fingertips so you can walk down somewhere where you can find balance. Two more to pulse with your breath. Come forward, breathe in. Bring it back, breathe out. Bring it forward, sink into your hips. Slowly bring it back, exhale. We hold. You can stay here, place something under your hands. Try to lengthen the spine. So I notice that I come into the tippy, 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 tippy of my index and middle finger to really lift my chest. Hips a little bit in a, what is it, an anti-clockwise. So the right hip moves a little forward and the left hip a little back. Fabulous. All right, bend the left knee, hands forward. Shiva squat, right knee hooks behind the left. Place the foot into the floor, arms come up towards the sky. Inhale, pulse it down, arms behind you, exhale. A little bit up, inhale, lovely, exhale. Two more times, bring it up, pulse it down. Bring it up. Hands to heart center, lift the heart towards the thumbs, breathe in. Twist the right elbow to the outside of the left leg this time. So rather than just hanging out here, make it active by bringing as if you've got something between your hands and you want to flatten it. So the elbow resists the leg and the hands resist each other. So you start to open up that left, open up that left collarbone, yes. So the left shoulder starts to step above the right shoulder. Yeah, now you're twisting. Good. Take breaths here. Don't forget to breathe. For three, two, look down, hands down. Inhale, standing splits. Right leg lifts up towards the sky. Hold it here. Or maybe bring the left hand behind the calf. So you can draw your nose closer to your shin. Fabulous. Maybe walk that right hand a little bit out. Point your right toes for three, two, both feet to meet gracefully, exhale. Inhale, halfway lift, leg down. Step back to plank pose. Notice which foot steps first, that's your dominant side. So maybe try to alternate, try to remember, be precise in how you move. Hold your plank pose here. Now we do a full chaturanga. So you first shift the weight forward, shoulders in front of the wrist, onto the tippy toes, hold, I know, and then bend the elbows 90 degrees. Fabulous. Flip one foot point, flip the other foot point. Inhale, upward facing dog. You can also be in cobra on your belly. Chin to chest. Whew. Downward facing dog. Six breaths. Play time. Playtime can be child's pose to rest. Playtime can be little hops on your mat. Playtime can be anything. You can have a sip of water. Nice. Little bounces on your mat are good. Yes. Be a little bit playful like a child. 
for three, two, downward facing dog, maybe find your measurement into a plank pose and then exhale, breathe into the nose and a big sigh out of the mouth, one more time, a bit more noise, let go, bend your knees, look forward, step, jump or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway, lift, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward, dive forward. Rise, stand all the way up, high mountain, arms above your head. Hands to heart center, exhale. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Bring your arms above your head. Now relax your shoulders. Good. Take a deep breath in here. Hands to heart center. Lift the heart towards the thumbs. To your right, bring your right, that would be your left elbow, to the outside of your right leg. Lovely. Find a twist. Now your challenge is to look down to the floor and start to peel your left foot. Hover your left foot. Maybe draw the left heel to your sit bone. Yes, I know. Feel the resistance of the knee in the leg and the hands as well. That really starts to help you balance. Maybe you extend the left leg behind you. Balance, balance, balance. No judgment, no attachment to the result. For three, whoop, two, feet back together. Inhale, high mountain. Hands to heart center. Exhale, close your eyes, three breaths. Notice what you're thinking, make the thoughts positive and kind. Teach yourself to be positive and kind towards yourself. So you can be positive and kind towards others. It all starts up here in your own world. Yeah, very nice. Chair pose, inhale, bring the arms above your head. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. There we go, heart to thumbs. Now twist to your left, so the right elbow, and try to do that resistance. So if you're just hanging out here, nothing is really going to happen. So you're trying to softly press the right elbow and the thigh. Once you've got that anchor, the hands press. And then you can start to anchor through the right foot and lift your, well it will be your left foot, and lift your right heel towards your sit bone. Focus your eyes on the point in front of you on the floor. Really fixed point. That's called your drishti. Stay with your breath. Nice work. For three, maybe extend the right leg behind you. For two, softly, gracefully step the feet together. Inhale, high mountain, arms come up. Slide it out, exhale. Inhale, high mountain. Let's flow. Exhale, fold forward, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Step your left foot to the back of your mat to a low lunge. Drop the left knee down towards the floor. Inhale for Anjanayasana, bring the arms next to your ears. And then bring the hands to heart center. Point your left toes. Now if you have a sensitive knee, please keep your left knee on the floor for the next bit. If you really want to start engaging the back leg, I've got a little challenge for you. Take a deep breath in, bring the arms up. Now press into the right foot and the left shin. So you're starting to lift your left knee off the floor. I know, this is hard work. I know, lift it up, lift it up. You can bring your hands to your thigh if that is easier. Power it up, nice work. Take a deep breath in. Be gentle with the left knee, softly place it down. Whew, well done. Inhale here. Now maybe your blocks come in, or your books or your bottles of water, and then come to a half split. So you bring your bum back, maybe a little bit lower, and now try again to lift your chest. So a straight spine, and it's almost like you're drawing the heel towards yourself, but it stays on the spot. You know when you like want to clean the sole of your feet? Yes, you're brushing your sole of your feet if you've got dirty shoes. So you're pulling it in, but it's, it's activated. 
So there's a scissoring kind of action of the heel pulling back, the knee pulling forward, but you can't see it. Shoulders away from the ears, stay here for three breaths. Take a deep breath in here. Bend the knee, blocks to the side, exhale. Tuck your left toes, inhale. Flatten the palms, exhale. Three-legged dog, there we go. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale, knee to your nose. Inhale, three-legged dog, lift the right leg. To the right armpit, exhale, heel to buttock. Inhale, three-legged dog. To your left arm, exhale. Wonderful. Inhale, three-legged dog. Step the foot in between your hands. Maybe come to fingertips. Good. Help it forward. Look forward. Inhale. Shiva squat. Exhale. Nice work. Left toes down. Arms up. Take a deep breath in. Hands to heart center. Breathe out. Arms come back up. Breathe in. Hands to heart centers, pulse it down. Stand all the way up, left knee in towards your chest, and now hug the knee in towards your chest. Stay there. So it is your left knee that is drawn in towards your chest. Nice. Find your balance. A toe hook. Your left hand create a gun. I don't know if you can see it. That will be your gun. Yes. That gun is going to hold on to your big toe. So the fingers go around the big toe. I like to even close, close the toe with my thumb. So there you go. Now you can feel the resistance again. So the foot is pushing down, but the arm is resisting. So there's this soft, gentle push-pull, counter-contraction counter they call it. Keep that. Nice. Maybe you want to bring the right hand to the side. It can help the balance. I'll show you from the side. So stay where you are. Take a deep breath in. Keep your spine straight. And I'll start to lift the leg. So you're still pushing forward and the arm is pulling back. Yes. Maybe you can extend the leg. But if you extend the leg and you start to arch your upper body forward, you're not really doing your backline a lot of favor. We want to open the collarbones. We want to have a straight spine. Focus your eyes. Yes, hold on to the toe. Hold on to the toe for three. Now your challenge is to keep the leg where it is, but you're going to let go. So take a deep breath in. And then let go of the foot. Bring the arms up for three. Two. Hands down, left leg up. Standing splits. Breathe in. Right hand to your shin, nose to your shin, left hand a little to the side. For our handstand lovers, if you want to do some handstand practice, you may do that here. Otherwise, please just stay where you are. Handstand, you can bring your hands shoulder width apart and start to clap the feet. I call it high five in the feet. So you literally lift up, boop, and you clap your feet. Hop, and you clap your feet. Keep your eyes focused. Maybe you clip your feet a little bit higher. Maybe you can hold it. Yes, different people, different options. For three, two, lift the left toes up, right foot is down, fold forward. Nice work. Powerful practice. Inhale, halfway with lengthen. Chaturanga, step, jump, float, remember which foot steps first. Shift forward, neck in line with the spine. Often people drop the head, so look a little forward. Bend the elbows, you've got time. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath into the nose. Sigh it out. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, fold forward, relax your 
neck and shoulders. Inhale, rise all the way up high mountain, hands above your head. Hands to heart center. Last bit of standing, inhale, come up. Bend your knees, fold forward, exhale. Big inhale to lift your chest up. Right foot steps to the back of your mat. Pulse forward to breathe in. And then pulse back to breathe out. Drop the right knee to the floor. Point the right toes and lift the arms up towards the sky. Find a comfortable position for the right knee. If you know you're going to stay here, then maybe even fold the mat in two. So your knee's got a nice padding there. That might be an option for you. Specifically if you've got a sensitive kneecap. Otherwise, remember, the arms go up and I start to uh, press your shin. Hands can be on the thigh. Avoid the knee. The knee here in the front is a sensitive joint. Uh, maybe the hands go up. Lift your gaze. Smile. Breathe for three. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Nice work. Two. Soft landing. <laughs> Amazing. Take a deep breath in. Arms up. Extend your left leg for half splits. Bring your props in here. So we're trying again to lengthen that spine. Draw the left hip slightly back and your right hip slightly forward. Close your eyes. Four breaths here. Find that softness in the challenge. A beautiful balance between effort and effortlessness. Let your left toes open and up and away from each other. Move your blocks to the side. Bend your left knee. Flatten the palms, tuck your right toes. Inhale, three-legged dog, left leg lift. Knee to your nose, exhale. Strong practice, keep going. Inhale, three-legged dog. To your left arm, exhale. You're doing a great job. Stay with it. Inhale. To the right side. Exhale. Inhale. Three-legged dog. Look forward. Yes, there you go. Keep looking forward and step that foot or help the foot to the top of the mat. Look forward. Breathe in. Shiva squat. Right knee hooks behind the left. Right toes softly descend. Just the toes. Then bring the arms up towards the sky. Inhale. Hands to heart center, exhale. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Hands down to the floor, exhale. Inhale, stand and split. Or actually, excuse me, we first let the knee in towards your chest. So it's the right knee in towards your chest. We'll go to stand and split after. Right knee in towards your chest. Find your gaze, find your dristi, and then it's your gun. Yoga guns only shoot love. <laughs> That's the only thing. They only shoot love, so hook it around the toe, and it's a pull push. So the foot wants to move away, and the arm is like, no, stay, and the foot is going, no, go, stay, go. That's the feeling you've got. <laughs> Lots of imagination. I'll show you from the side. Now really find a stable gaze, feel the rooting through your left foot, open the collarbones and your knee can be bent as long as you're practicing that resistance. Your left hand can be to the side, I can cheat, <laughs> I can hold it to the wall, I won't, I promise, I'll put it in front of my heart. Nice, keep breathing and then start to kick the foot forward while the hand is resisting the foot. See where you can go. It's a practice, it's a practice, it's a practice. Take a deep breath in here. There you go. Let go, but kick the arms up, kick the legs up for three. I know. Two. And there we go. Hands down, right leg up, standing splits. Left hand can come around the calf. Or you can do your little high fives. Or your big high fives. 
above your head. For three, two, feet together, fold forward, and then bring your feet hip width apart for what we call good enough pose. Bring your hands under the feet. Now when I say bring your hands under the feet, I'll show you on this side. I don't mean just the fingers. It's the full hand. So your toes are touching the edge here, the edge of your wrist. I like to spread my hand underneath the foot. So the big toe is standing on the meaty part of your thumb. Yeah, gorilla's pose. If you need to bend the knees more, bend the knees more. Give yourself that space. Bend the elbows. And like a gorilla, shake, shake your head. Gorillas don't shake your heads, but you know, it feels so nice. And then find stillness for four breaths. How still can you be? Focus on the breath. Maybe a nice side. <sighs> Inhale, halfway, big flip and exhale, fold forward, toe heel your feet to touch. Inhale, high mountain, rise all the way up. Great work, yogis. Hands to heart center. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, fold forward, relax your neck and shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift, make them. Now step your left foot to the back of your mat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to practice splits. Half splits to potentially full splits. Really? Yeah, really. Doesn't mean you're going to get it today, but we know the steps towards wherever we want to go. Now your bottles or your blocks come in. I like to keep my left toes tucked. Why? The tendency here, if you've got your right leg in front and you want to come into a full split, I'll show you a little bit sideways, is that this right hip wants to open. So if I look to my right foot now, yes, I can maybe come into a split, but my right toes are pointing to the side, my right knee is pointing to the side, Rather, stay a little bit higher, but keep your hips square to the front. If you have a bolster or something, it can also help to put the bolster or the pillow here under your leg, under your right leg. If you feel, because we've done a lot of opening of the back line of the body, that you want to try to go a little bit deeper, for now keep your back toes cut, just to keep your left hip square to the front. You can start to come into half splits, different people, different options. So this might be you, staying here with your eyes closed and just noticing the sensations in the back of the right leg. If you're like, hmm, let's try where we can go. Start to walk your bottles, your books, your blocks a little bit forward. I hope you have a sleepy mat, mine is not so sleepy. You can start to press that heel forward. Now walk your blocks a little bit backwards, so you can have the full weight on the blocks and then try to lengthen the spine. Again, if you have a bolster and you want to place it here underneath or a block, you can do that as well. So the key here, and I had to learn that, um, not the hard way, but maybe yeah, the unnatural way for my body, so just to share. Um, my teacher told me, in, order, in honor of my teacher, yes, I'm very strong. <laughs> she said, there's no problem, you're strong. She said, the challenge for you is to soften. So in order for me to get further into a pose, if that's what I wanted to do, it was the softening. It wasn't a, oh, yes, we can get into her. It was, all right, let's rest the legs on something. And for me here, the blocks can really help because I can take the attention of the legs, bring more power into the arms, and start with my eyes closed to soften 
and from that softening you can maybe come down. Please be gentle with your body. Nothing must go anywhere. Nothing should go anywhere. As long as you feel sensations in the body, you're in the right place. You can maybe relax your left toes now. Wiggle them. Important to make sure your toes are happy. Yes, that you're smiling and that you're breathing. Take five more breaths here. And some days it comes easy and some days it's more challenging. You're beautiful just the way you are. I hope you're not stuck. Otherwise, I hope you've got someone close by that can start to help you come back. Come into a tabletop. Move the blocks to the side, your books, your bottles. And now just make a couple of circles with your whole body, feeling if your body is okay. Sometimes the mind thinks, oh, I should go further. Let's go further. Um, while the body has already given little signals of like, I'm actually quite okay here. So this is a check-in into, okay, what, what choices did I make? And were they the right one? How much space? I feel a huge difference in the right side and the left. Fabulous. Obviously, we'll do the other side. So first, come into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath into the nose. And a sigh. You are wonderful. You did great. Bend your knees. Look forward. Step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale. Halfway lift. Lengthen. Right foot steps to the back. Off we go. If you know you're going to stay here, maybe pat that knee, fold your mat double, and start to bring your blocks in. Wait a little bit. Now that you know where you're going, sometimes the tendency is to speed the foundation, the step-by-step -step kind of approach to start speeding it up. Okay, I'll just go where, like, where I have to go. It's these steps that actually are very, very important to just feel. Keep those right toes tucked. Your left side might be very different from your, from your right. Maybe you've had injuries, we're not 100% symmetrical. So honor every shape and every time you try it as if it's the first time you're trying it. Really close your eyes and breathe and go, oh, mm, I need to stay here. Or, hmm, I think I can go a little bit deeper. And then if you want to do that, again, no attachment, no judgment. Deeper is not better. It's just deeper. <laughs> You're still getting the benefits. You're creating space in the body. I need to lift a little bit because these beautiful Mokana mats, they're amazing, this ant shape. But then when I want to slide, oh no, it's actually feasible. So I know that my left side is more open than the right. But I don't want to collapse into it. I feel now I'm hanging a little bit in the shoulders. It's probably because I want to put my block down. Just one, one more. Notice what the right toes are doing. You can even look behind you and go, hey, that right knee is now totally turned to the right side. Not really where we want to be. Easier, but not as safe as keeping the right knee down. Keep the hips square. And you're also almost taking a shortcut by doing that. Now you're working in those muscles that are short, shorter probably. For me, they were, they still are sometimes. Like it's challenging parts, the right hip flexor, left hamstring took me a long time lots of practice lots of practice and then as i told you on the other side ah, the softening the softening the softening i need to close my eyes and actually visualize something soft a teddy bear <laughs> a feather pillow mm, softness 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 even soften the tongue in my mouth soften the jaw and the skin on my face three more rounds of breath here La 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 la. Slowly take it easy. Come out of the shape. Mamma mia, well done. Blocks can come to the side. Last down.
stand up. Hopefully we'll feel nice and equal again. Yes, both legs are the same length. That's good news, or at least they feel the same length. Right knee to the right wrist for a half pigeon. Hold it here. Hover the foot above the floor. And then bring the shin diagonally to the floor. Softly drop the left knee. And our toe heel. This can also help. This toe healing, if you're working with your splits, it's the same movement. Yes, nice. Mm, this is going to feel nice. Take a deep breath in. Relax your left toes. Come to your elbows. Come into your block. You can even place your hand on a block if that feels nice. One full minute. Breathe. What can you soften? Maybe the notice, the music that is playing for you? Depending on the list that you've picked, is it soft, gentle, supportive music? If not, you can always put that meditation music list on, because we're now really consciously Winding down, softening, nurturing, slowing down. You can even exhale out of the mouth here every time if it feels nice. Take two more rounds of breath here. Bring your hands back under your shoulders. Tuck your left toes, pause. Now press into your hands and lift your leg close to your belly. Hold for three. Good work. Core strength. Focus your eyes. Two. Downward facing dog. Look forward, left knee to your left wrist, pause, shin to floor, guide it down, right knee, toe, knee, toe, knee, it's actually not toe heel, it's more toe kneeing, toe kneeing your right leg back, until you've got that switch po sweet point where you go, uh-uh, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, then you take a breath in, and then come down for a minute of, is it bliss? At least it's breath. At least it is creating space in your hip, in your mind, connecting the physical, mental, emotional body. Notice what you notice. Notice the sensations in the body. Sigh of surrender and sigh of letting go. Two more rounds of breath. Hands come under your shoulders and this time roll to the left side of your bum. Slide the back leg forward and extend both legs in front of you. Take a deep breath in. Now we've worked a lot in our hammies. We've worked a lot in our, in our hip flexors. So let's just take a very soft variation. Almost like a rounding kind of forward if you've got block. So let the toes fall out. Not a very active stretch in those hamstrings, more just a softening.
bring one pillow or one block with you when you roll down. If you have a sensitive lower back, please hold on to the knees to support yourself on the way down. If you feel that you're getting a little bit cold, maybe put something on now. So you already started to really be comfy. Already a little bit of a sense of Shavasana, a sense of letting go, but make yourself comfortable. Bring the pillow, could be a meditation pillow, something, something relatively light, and the block or the block. Bring the arms next to you and then let the knees fall over to the left side. You can press the back of the head in the floor. I noticed I just did that. And then I can shimmy my left shoulder blades. Oh, just a little bit extra. And you can have your nose pointing up towards the sky. Or you can turn your head to face the right side. And I invite you to close your eyes. Relax your toes. Sometimes we think we're relaxing. But then if you go body part by body part, so you kind of do your scan. Relax your toes, ankles. You can do go joints by joints. You can even do like shin, calf, muscle by muscle. Relax your tummy. And then really melt the body down into the floor. Notice how your fingers curl up nice and soft. Three more breaths here. Bring the head back to center. Inhale, bring the knees back. And I like to always just find some symmetry. Find your symmetry again. So maybe you have to remove your block and your pillow, lift your hips. Find your symmetry. Start exactly the same way. Open the arms, take a deep breath in, and then let the knees fall over to the right side. Press the head to shimmy the right shoulder. You don't have to do that. And then the nose can be pointed up. So the difference between having the nose pointing up or to the side is just to continue the spiral twist of your spine in the neck. If it doesn't feel nice for the neck, it means it doesn't have belly. So then just keep your head and your nose or your face pointing straight up. Now really focus on relaxing every cell in your body. Two more rounds of breath. Ah, nice side. Inhale to bring the knees back to center. And then just bring the legs up, give them a little shake. And then hug your knees in towards your chest. Wiggle a little from right to left. And then extend into Shavasana. If you have a bolster, you can place it under the knees. You can also have the feet as wide as the mat and knock, knock the knees in towards each other. This is a little gentler for the lower back. And then just totally surrender. Time flies when we're having fun. So today I'm just going to leave you in Shavasana. I hope you have some time. Shavasana is a very important shape. It's, um, I call it, it's the saving of information. It's the integration. I think it's often underestimated how important
to Shavasana. It's like, oh yeah, I've done my practice. This is not important. It is very important. It's a sense of letting go. It's part of your practice. So normally I would say five to ten minutes is a really nice way to just let... It's the unknown. We don't have to understand. How does our body remember moves? How do our hands know where to go when we do yoga? It gets recorded somewhere, those neurological pathways. Here, everything goes click, 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 and it just integrates. I sometimes compare it to working on a document on a computer the whole day, and then not pressing the save button. So you've done all this effort on your mat, why not save all the information, conscious and subconscious, let it integrate. So you know that you've got your meditation music list from my Spotify account. If you can put that on and it will, you know, it will just be there for you. If you're afraid when you're in Shavasana that you'll fall asleep, put a timer on your watch or on your phone. Maybe just for once, commit to five or ten minutes. See what happens. Another really nice way to close your practice is to meditate. You're so clear. The mind is clear, focused, connected. So this is the kind of space where magic can come in. <laughs> Brilliant ideas. And there's also a healing and an integration to that process. So I'm going to leave you there for now. Thank you for joining me tonight. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to email me. Have a lovely rest of your day.